What's going on, everyone? Do you, do you guys think this is a game? <laughs> I told you guys where Bitcoin would go, and it touched exactly there. I told you guys yesterday that the SPY was at resistance. And clearly today, you can see that it failed that resistance, and it's now trading below uh, multiple trend line supports. And to top it off, uh, towards the end of the day, I posted a light put position. Very, very safe. January 3rd expiry. Uh, and towards the end of the day, the contracts were up $100 each. So, guys, this is what I do. If you guys have learned anything, if I helped you guys at all, please make sure to comment, like, subscribe, share widely with your friends and family. We all eat together. I do all this for free. So, yeah, without further ado, let's get started with the video. Also, I post watch lists every morning, as well as morning and midday updates on my TikTok and Instagram. So, Anyway, <clears throat> here is an hourly chart of the SPY, okay? So this is an uptrend level that started last Tuesday, right? And uh, today we ended up breaking that level. So then I didn't want to buy puts upon that break. I wanted to buy puts upon the second trend line breaking. But intraday, uh, right over here, I saw tons of weakness i saw weakness in the macd and i saw that the rsi was also getting stagnant so i alerted all uh, those put positions that you saw earlier right here right and uh it was completely it did not even like you know i wanted to i wanted the spy to close below 467.30 before i got into those puts but we ended up getting them above 468 and uh, something about my gut as well as, you know, the indicators, everything just looked very, very weak. So I decided to get into puts and currently they're working out pretty well. So now you can clearly see that we broke down below this uptrend. This is the daily chart of the SPY now, right? And the downward target, the first one would be around 464, 465. Okay. And you can see that the MACD is still very overbought. We broke down below support and the RSI barely moved. So that is very, very bearish. Um, what could end up happening now tomorrow is we could, you know, open wherever, honestly. But then what will most likely end up happening is we might come back and retest this trend line here. All right. So then at that point, once we come back and retest the trend line, uh, it'll cause many people to either, you know, sell their positions. And, you know, mostly it's there as a means of, people getting into uh puts at a cheaper price so um <clears throat> wow I'm, I'm really tired today <laughs> so um yeah so honestly uh we might come back and retest this 468 27 level we might come back and retest the trend line that was broken completely normal in technical analysis but again we have to see if we fail at those levels then we're definitely going to come back lower to 464 to 465 this is not a bullish setup at all the indicators are extremely overbought the rsi barely moved and um to get a better gauge of what the spy is going to do we have to look at the nasdaq and the iwm but for like just looking at this we closed below major uptrend support and if we fall then there's a lot more room to go down so now let's go ahead and take a look at the nasdaq all right the nasdaq also does not look bullish at all so number one it filled the first gap uh at this high right here at 392.34 the next i mean there's a gap all the way down to 387.60 over here but now the nasdaq needs to hold 390 and 388 if those levels don't hold then we're definitely going to come back and fill this gap over here at 387.60 we can see that the nasdaq is also overbought rsi also a bit stagnant compared to the big move today right and um yeah i mean it just does not look great <laughs> i mean this just doesn't look good so we need to see if this was just a bearish fake out where you know again this could be extremely similar to what happened a few days ago <laughs> where things did look uh bearish but then we gapped up so i mean that's why i bought into the uh january 3rd puts because if we did gap up and this was a fake out then we wouldn't lose that much money so uh yeah that's that's really it the nasdaq doesn't look bullish at all um it needs to hold 388 and 390 those are the next downward targets and uh yeah so there's the analysis on the nasdaq to be honest now let's go ahead and take a look at the iwm 
the IWM does not look too hot, if I might say so myself. Uh, we closed below 216.50, which was very important. We failed at 218.12, uh, this very important trend line as well. Um, these lows now need to hold at 213. If 213 doesn't hold, then we're going to see new lows on the IWM. And then this would just be a big bear flag. But of course, who knows? So, uh, 213, 212 area needs to hold on the IWM. But again, this is just extremely bearish. The MACD is extremely overbought still, which signals that there's still tons of room to the downside. The RSI is still not oversold either. And we're almost making new lows. So again, uh, you know, this just looks very, very bearish. Um, you know, it looks way too bearish. That's that's the issue here. Um, it doesn't look normal. So I think, you know, I really do think, I mean, I had to buy those puts because it just gave a great technical setup. But it's just too good to be true how bearish <laughs> the market looks. So I, you know, I'm really, I wouldn't even be surprised if we gap up tomorrow at this point. Um, because the setup was just too, it, it was too easy for people to see. So usually when it's so easy like this, uh, it's the easiest to manipulate people. So I think that's what might end up happening. But I mean, we trade the charts. We see things, we trade according to them. And what happens, happens. So yeah, <laughs> we're currently short the market just a little bit. Pretty safe position. We're up $100 per contract. Um, the IWM looks pretty weak. The overall market looks pretty weak. I think we should take a look at the 30-year bond because the 30-year bond is showing tons of strength, whereas the NASDAQ is clearly, uh, looks like it's filling a gap. <laughs> so, um, we need to see now if the 30-year bond can come and like really, really now break above these highs here. If we break above these highs then I think that's when the strength of the 30-year bond is going to trickle into the NASDAQ. So I haven't made a video about this in a while, but when the 30-year bond is bullish, that means that the NASDAQ is supposed to be bullish as well. But, um, you know, clearly that's not the case right now. But if we break above 163, 163.50, that's when I think the NASDAQ should see a movement um, in accordance to in parallel to the 30 year bond last but not least we have to take a look at bitcoin so i've been talking about this 50 percent fib level of this wick for how long it's been the past few videos and where did we touch exactly we touched exactly to that 50 percent fib level so now what is next <clears throat> number one the MACD is extremely bearish. We are crossed above on the MACD, which is supposed to be very bullish, but Bitcoin is creating new lows. So that is a huge, that's one of the three reasons why I said I was bearish on Bitcoin. That is terrible. Number two, if you look at the RSI, the RSI is higher than where Bitcoin's price was before. Yet, I mean, look like, it's just a clear discrepancy. Um, a few days ago when the RSI was oversold at 29.97, um, right here, right? Bitcoin was trading at approximately 47K and the RSI was much lower. But now Bitcoin is trading lower, but the RSI is higher. So that means that there's still tons more room to the downside in accordance to the RSI. And that is very, very bearish as well. So there's i mean there's still tons more room to the downside on bitcoin the lower b band is vomiting which is another thing we don't want to see um vomiting meaning it's pointed downward so when the bollinger band is pointed downward like this then that means that the lower that that means that the standard one standard deviation uh the negative standard deviation away from uh bitcoin is continuing to go lower in a dramatic way which means that the price movement of Bitcoin to the downside can also fall dramatically. So um, just to keep it simple here, the next downward targets are going to be the 618% FIB and the 786% FIB, these two levels. Now, if 43,800 breaks, all right, then we're going to come back and retest this very, very important trend line right here. 
and um <clears throat> around the 41,000 42,000 level. And if that happens, then um get ready to buy the dip. <laughs> so, I mean, all of these dips are really just good buying opportunities. If you believe in Bitcoin long term, if you believe in the blockchain space long term, obviously, you know, all of these dips are just amazing buy opportunities. But currently, just technically, this is just a garbage. This is a literally garbage setup. Uh, but we need to see if these levels hold. That's it. Um, now, I could be completely wrong in terms of the technicals, blah, blah, blah. As long as those levels hold, then I am completely wrong. But we uh, did touch the 50% fib, like I said we would. Now, let's see what happens next. If you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, all that good stuff. And um, yeah, I post all my trades for free on Twitter. Please make sure to uh, do all that good stuff. I will see you guys tomorrow. I need to take a nap.